Hey everybody, Chad Westport here, and we are back with another special installment of our series with Dr. Mayabi Shields, and we've covered kind of the endocannabinoid system, some of the receptors in the body, the CB1 and the CB2 receptors in the previous episodes. Today, we are going to be talking about phytocannabinoids and endocannabinoids. Cannabinoids is something you've probably read on the label of your jar, but there's more to the story. So Dr. Mayabi Shields, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. These are my favorite molecules. So Yay. <laughs> and and we've got the we've got the the hands-on examples, which I always love. So let's just get right to it. Let me ask you the first question. All right. Our endocannabinoid system, we know that THC and C B D kind of bind with it. But do we have chemicals within ourselves that actually work with these systems? Why is it there? Yep. So they are the endocannabinoids. That's why we have the system. So endo just means like within. So they're literally just the cannabinoids within, like within <laughs> our own. Um, and why they're there, I mean, they're so important. They regulate, they're, they're signaling molecules. So they are responsible for going all over our body and binding with the receptors and having it control things like, I mean, appetite is one of them, metabolism, like wow. overall brain activity, the immune system, like huge, like, I mean, some of the most important types of things, but they're actually omega-6 fatty acids. So if you've heard of, oops, this is anandamide and anandamide is like probably the more popular of the two endocannabinoids as I mentioned. And it looks like this long, just like ridiculously long <laughs> oh, chain. string of, of fat. Oops. So it's a fat. So it actually comes out of the um, membranes and it is an omega-6 that is from right here. There are six, if you, if I can count them, one, two, three, four, five, and six. There are six carbons before you get to this double bond. Okay. If you had, if I did this, um, if I cut off those ones, now all of a sudden there's one, two, three, this would be an omega-3 fatty acid. So that's oh, wow. the difference between omega-3 and omega-6. And the endocannabinoids are both omega-6 fatty acids. So this is anandamide. Anandamide is more similar to THC in that it is a partial agonist, which means that it turns on the CB1 receptor, but not all the way. Hmm. And then there's a second endocannabinoid that doesn't get a lot of love, but I love it because I studied it more than anandamide. <laughs> And it's called 2-AG and it looks like this. So it's almost exactly the same, except for this part right here is attached to a glycerol instead of an ethanol amine. And these two molecules, the way that they bind in the receptor largely has to do with this big, long, fatty tail. They kind of like go in there and just, and it's big and fatty. And when I say fatty, you'll notice that most of these are black. That means they're carbon atoms. And in general, that means that they are lipophilic or fat loving. If you think about butter, butter is mostly carbon, right? Most oils are also mostly carbon. That's part of why cannabis is very sticky. Also part of why traditionally, unless you're making emulsions or something, you need to use an oil to dissolve your cannabinoids. Uh, same could be said about the endocannabinoids. They are also a fatty, fatty system. Um, so yeah, these are the two endocannabinoids. They're, they're super important. All of us have them. We're all making them right now. Interesting fun fact. The reason why the wake and bake feels different is because your endocannabinoid system is different in the morning than it is at night. In general, it's at the lowest, like right before you wake up in the morning. So like, you know, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. Um, it's also why it's really common at that time for people who have either like a migraine um, disorder, a seizure disorder, chronic pain. That's why that time point can be a really critical time point where you kind of like shoot or joke, like jolt awake or mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a sensitive time point basically when your mm -hmm. endocannabinoid system's at its lowest. Um, and then you wake up and your endocannabinoid system is still low. And then it, it climbs and climbs and climbs until like kind of like the afternoon, like right afternoon lunchtime and then it'll begin to go down again. Hmm. That is very interesting. And that can help some people, uh, maybe with their dosing or their, their timing regimens, uh, or it just might make sense why they're jolting up awake in the evening. Very interesting yeah. there. Yeah. I, I really think that I think in the morning is a good time for me to like, be able to prevent symptoms. 
Um, so like, I think I've said it, I've said it before. It's like, yeah. So the wake and bake is a stoner thing. It totally is. But it's also like a medicinal thing for some people. Like for some of us, that would prevent the whole day from going awry, right? Like, and, and me being the non-doctor here, being the stoner, eat your Wheaties. So <laughs> <laughs> get get your breakfast. Breakfast to champions. No, scratch that. We're we're being serious here. But the anandamide and the two AG, which you have mentioned, these are endo, so they're produced naturally by the body. Um, do they make us high or do we get them in large enough doses? Do they have a long enough duration? Like, are they just as good as THC? I mean, I think so. I think it's probably one of the only reasons why I like endurance athletics <laughs> because okay. um, long, like, so distance running, like the runner's high, like, I mean, I'm a swimmer, not a runner, but, um, you know, long prolonged cardiovascular exercise will release endocannabinoids. There are other things as well that have been linked to the endocannabinoid system. I know that um, one of the ones I was the most interested in was I saw a paper that linked acupuncture to the endocannabinoid mm. system. I thought that was fascinating in terms of like a release of endocannabinoids um, because acupuncture can make you feel that way. Mm -hmm. Another thing um, I know Wim Hof, I was listening to, I think it was a YouTube video of him where he was saying that he believed that the endocannabinoid system was part of his Wim Hof cold exposure, okay. you know, cold exposure breath work. I completely agree. It makes tons of sense. Also, if you haven't done cold exposure, it's an experience. It's also <laughs> high. I, so yeah, I mean, I'm chasing all of them. I chase the natural, I chase the national, the natural endocannabinoids as well, for sure. That's awesome. And so the so THC and CBD, they work on the same receptors uh, as these endocannabinoids. Is there ever a, a traffic jam or if one is taken by anandamide or maybe how long do they sit on these receptors? Is it an all day experience or? I don't know that we know that. Yeah, that's okay. so that's called receptor. That's called receptor occupancy. And it's really difficult to study. I don't know that we know the difference because it almost always has to do with a competition um, between the two things. And it's a competition between THC and anandamide or THC or in 2AG or C, right? And so they're competing. And the thing that drives that competition is how much of either one is there. And they're both kind of always changing. Um, but when I mentioned the wake and bake feeling different, you know, that's kind of part of what I was describing is that there's less competition there. Um, mm -hmm. There are less endocannabinoids present at that time period. Um, and to my knowledge, I don't think that our receptors change that quickly, although our receptor levels do change with tolerance. So like if you're developing a tolerance, you are reducing the number of CB1 receptors. That's why you have to use more cannabis to feel the same way. Um, but I don't, I don't know that we know exactly how much time like each of them spends, but we do know that they compete directly for the same spot, at least THC and anandamide do they compete for, for the same spot. Um, CBD binds to a different spot on, on the outside. So yeah, the reason, so the reason why um, the phytocannabinoids, this is Delta 9 THC, the reason why it activates the same receptor is because it is, even though it doesn't look it, it mimics this. Our body thinks that this is this. And actually mm -hmm. part of it is exactly the same. This part of the tail that's the omega-6 is right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're exactly the same and they kind of hang out in the same spot. So yeah. the difference between THC and CBD and why they bind differently is actually just right here. It's just that bond. This is Delta 9 THC. It's a three ring structure and it's pretty rigid. But if you break this bond and I'm going to just quickly swap out the piece. This is now CBD and it oh, is wow. a two ring structure like this and it's much more flexible and it has kind of like it's a very similar shape but it is totally different and feels totally different so cbd like i mentioned before actually doesn't bind to either the cb1 or the cb2 receptor with super high affinity cbd's main target it seems to be the serotonin receptor which is a whole other you know interesting side thing um it does turn down the effects of, of thc um, by binding to the outside sometimes um but i mean we're still looking into these things like a ton and i think that they're fascinating because they do look a lot like the, the endocannabinoids um they're just in circles kind of if you imagined that 
the endocannabinoids kind of can be in all, look at the shape that it can make. It could almost make a similar circular. Let me see if I can do it. It could almost make something similar, right? It could almost can twist almost. itself into, it can twist itself into something. They call it the hairpin. That's sometimes the way that it's portrayed on hmm. most websites. If you Google endocannabinoids, they'll be portrayed kind of like this, okay. um, which is the hairpin structure of it. Um, but in reality, it's not like this. It's just free moving all oh, around. Wow. Um, right. And that's kind of similar to how CBD is. So that's the main difference between CBD and THC. But this small, small difference here makes a huge difference in the effects, right? And that's just like an example of how powerful really small changes can be um, when you're this zoomed in to the molecules. Man. That is amazing stuff. Everybody go back and watch this one twice. Take some notes. And don't forget the previous uh, episodes in this series. And the good news is there's more to come. So please stay tuned. Go and follow Dr. Mayabi Shields. All her information's in the bottom there. And learn some more and spread the word. So until next time, everybody, we'll catch you later. One, two,